Sounds like we're about to embark on a some some kind of uh, difficult, mysterious uh, type of voyage. That's what this sounds like. It's a Super Friends remix. Beautiful. And you, well, you know what the other thing is is maybe we are about to embark on a voyage. Yeah, uh, I hope so. Uh, I love voyages. Like some some type of voyage that we can embark on while just sitting right here completely safe. Expedition? With the internet at our disposal. Uh, we are back! What's up, everybody? Uh, we got many things to talk about today, including another wild episode. For those that were with us on the last episode, you know that was like, that was must-see TV. Was it? Are you kidding me? Uh, the segment on the most enthusiastic unboxing experience of all time. Yeah. The, the girl who got the dates. That, that was out of control, man. That's must-see TV. <laughs> the, uh, the flying fox at the end there. <laughs> <laughs> I can see his penis. That's must-see TV. That was... Uh... Yeah, it was a fun time. Shout out, Javon. Uh, we have more and more fun every single time we're here. We got big plans, man. That's the thing. Uh, people are wondering why we're a little bit late again today. Uh, well, it's because we're planning. We're scheming over here. We are. We got like big things coming in the future for the Lou Later community. And it's I know all cause, good things. Because we get, get a lot of questions from people. They're like, hey, man, what's even happening with this show? How can I support this show? Honestly. And we get a lot of people supporting us in the super chat and obviously just a lot of people supporting us on social media and saying beautiful things to us. Mm -hmm. and Shout out Jivan. It's Sing. incredibly motivating. Yeah. To uh to see all this activity and 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 you know when it comes to like developing a community around something and and and, and investing in that like broadcasting every single day there's other pieces that you can attach to it that help to just make it all even more special. You know what I'm saying, Will? Yeah. Oh, dude. This uh, chat, Vishal Shingari. Shingari. Yeah. Have you tried Galu Jaman? Absolutely not. Oh, what is it? It is amazing. Wait, what? It's like a Indian dessert. And it's that good? It's very good. Can you describe it to me? Maybe I have had it. I, I don't know. I think know. you might have. Maybe somebody gave it to me. I don't... Oh, it's very, very it's sweet. soaked in like a syrup, like almost like maple syrup. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's a, but it's like sort of like a donut. Yes. I've had this before. Oh. Yes, it's, it's absolutely delicious. It's absolutely delicious. Yeah, look at this. How is it that we always end up on Google images of food that we uh, don't have that we would love uh, to have? Yeah. No, there was a place... Um, I saw a YouTube video... There's a place, it's a it's an Indian buffet. I can't remember. I think it's in Mississauga, but it's like famous. So there might be more than one actually. Okay. And uh, this is one of the desserts that they offer, but it's like, they got like a hundred varieties of things that you can get. And I think Vin went there and he's like, yo, you gotta go there. Hmm. And then I caught a YouTube video where one of those food type guys. Okay. Was marching around there with his camera. It was like just having the time of his life. You know, yeah. you know the food guys who really love it? I'm trying to think of the Indian restaurant in Mississauga. But it's a buffet. It's a pretty big... It maybe it's, it Is might it? be... It might not be Mississauga, but... <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? It's like over that way, sort of. Yeah. Shout out Dharma Squid. Shout out Miguel Renteria. Uh, we appreciate each and every one of you. We always keep an eye on that. Shout out Javon again. <laughs> All day, every day, been watching for a long time. And then these hands, these hands, which, which, when you see this emoji, what does it mean to you, Will? By the way, I'm holding both hands together. What does it say to you? To me, I think it's thank you. No, I know. I picture it like that too, like this one. Okay. Um, but people, other people say it's just two hands slapping. It's just a high five. <laughs> it could be that. Yeah, I don't mind that. But I'm trying to remember because when I was in India, that was the that was a thing, right? This one? Am I crazy? This one is a thing, right? It's like yeah. a greeting of some kind. 
someone's uh-huh. gonna someone's gonna help me out. Other people see praying. They see pr- uh, praying hands. So praying hands, yeah. That's what Ryan always uses. He he always he uses it in a fashion. I think yeah. Namaste. 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 Yeah 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 yeah. It could be. Listen, that's the emoji thing. That's the emoji thing. You could be what, what you want it to be. Like how I use the pregnant man for <laughs> when I ate too much. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Yeah. I got a food baby. That's what they call it. Did you know that? Really? Yeah, when you eat too much. Oh. When's the last time you ate a lot and you were like, oh, I am stuffed. And you had to lie down. When's the, it's It's been a while, I bet. Yes. It's been a while. But I think tonight I have HelloFresh. Mm, tonight's the night? And they sent me a family pack. Oh! So, yeah. It's going to be a good time. It's going big. Shout out Turtle 3000. Shout out Iman Shu. And uh, he said his favorite thing is go ahead, Will. He, he likes go ahead, Will. <laughs> I know you're a big fan of that, dude. Sure. Those are big moments. Go ahead, Will. I got nothing. <laughs> All right, top story of the day. You know, I don't want to hit you with an Apple headline every two seconds uh, as the as the lead uh, story. Also, I posted a video on Unbox Therapy. You should go check it out. It's uh, the new iPhone SE. I lamented a little bit. I got, uh, you know, a new set. We got a new set over there. Like, a, well, I mean, it's not a new set. It's just like a rearrangement of some things. And uh, we got the classical music going. I mean, it's kind of, there's something, there's a, it's a bit of a thing. But anyway. It's a vibe. Since that went out today, and that was Apple a day, and we got so many Apple headlines, and I got to take care of everybody out there. Mm. Uh, this is kind of like a peripheral Apple headline, but it's actually focusing on Samsung and Oppo. But definitely go watch this video at a later point after you're done with this broadcast. Uh, Samsung and Oppo seek to rival iPhone A-series chips with custom designs and TSMC fabrication. Uh, this is tough business right now. That's a mm. tough taco right now. Trying to trying to beef with uh, Apple because the A series stuff it's out of control. It, yes, it's uh, crushing the game, so to speak. Mm-hmm. And so others are saying, "Well, get in there, we customize. Maybe we uh, maybe we tussle." Uh, you had Google, remember? Well, they they with the latest the Pixel, they went in there and they said, "We want to make some modifications just for us, mm-hmm. just for us." And now you see the likes of Samsung going in there possibly for something similar. Now, Samsung, you got the Exynos, but is that rivaling the A-series? Uh, maybe it's a matter of time here before Samsung has a product out there, or their very own silicon that is uh, Apple caliber. Of course, the Apple people will never never agree. Earlier this year, Chinese smartphone brand Oppo launched its first custom silicon chip, the Mary Silicon X image processor in the Find X5. I looked at this device, actually. Now the company's chip design team is developing an application processor and an entire custom system on a chip. That's SOC with the little O. For future Oppo devices, like Apple's custom silicon chips, Oppo is looking to TSMC to manufacture its chips. That's where you would look, Well, You go over there, you head over to Taiwan and say, hey. Give me that SOC. Is this TSMC? They're like, no, this is a bubble tea shop. <laughs> and you're like, well... Yes. It's not what I was looking for, but I'll take a, I'll take a milk tea or uh, yeah. or I'll take a Dirioka or whatever. <laughs> uh, I haven't had one of those in a while, man. But I've been thinking about it. Mm-hmm. Those Diriocas, I've been thinking about that from the alley. Yeah. Sometimes it just crosses my mind out of nowhere. I'm like, how? Where did that come from? It's a nice little treat. Oh man, with the brown sugar and whatnot. I'm mm-hmm. <sighs> gonna have to stop by. You should. I'm gonna have to stop. They by. miss you there. Uh, IT Home suggests that Apple will launch its custom AP manufactured with TSMC 6 nanometer process in 2023, reportedly followed by a full SOC integrating the APN modem manufactured with TSMC's 4 nanometer process in 2024. Shout out, Mike. The chips may not be comparable to offerings from Qualcomm and MediaTek in terms of efficiency and fabrication process, but they could be adopted in entry-level mobile products first. I see. And meanwhile, iNews24 reports that Samsung smartphone chief, Rote Moon. Whoa. Yeah, I know we had a pause on that because that's that's a good one. Mm-hmm. It's a good Moon. one. Tay Moon. I Ro- like it. I like saying it more like this. Rote Moon. 
it's like a nursery rhyme. Rote Moon. I was watching uh, with my daughter the movie Sing, and the guy's name is Moon in that movie. Oh, the yeah. Little Koala. Oh. You don't know these movies. I have no idea, no. Um, but Rote Moon sounds almost like, uh, well, it sounds delicious, to be honest. <laughs> He told a company. Uh, he told at a company town hall meeting that we will make an AP unique to the galaxy, to this galaxy, to our galaxy, to all galaxies that we that put a Samsung badge on it. The push towards custom silicon is reportedly being driven by GPS issues and poor thermal performance caused by the Exynos 2200 chip. Very interesting. Yeah, stuff. they got to be careful with the thermal performance. Boy, I, with the overheating and whatnot. I agree with that. Samsung. I agree with that. Just got to be careful. Absolutely. We don't want any of that. But uh, listen, Xiaomi said, you remember the Xiaomi quote where they said their battle with Apple is a war of life and death? You remember that? Yeah. That translation? Yeah. That was a kind of a woe situation. Although maybe the way we translate, maybe this is where language fails us. I don't think they were. It wasn't a threat. They were just saying this is really important to us. Mm -hmm. And the translation comes out that way. Uh, yes, this is a big, uh, this has got to be paramount for these companies to compete in on, on this level. Uh, you can't let Apple get too far ahead. And uh, it looks like uh, that's, uh, that's a war of life and death right there. Yeah. Good luck. Elon Musk's arrival stirs fears among some Twitter employees. Oh, my God. Elon is coming. My God. So dangerous. What might he say? What might he do? Now that he owns 9.2% of the company, I'm quitting. I'm out of here. I, I, ain't no, I ain't no Elon guy. Uh, I don't know. I mean, you got to assume he's a polarizing figure, incredibly uh, popular individual. And you know what comes along with popularity is polarization. Comes along with popularity. Sure. It's well known. Well, the more famous you are, uh, the more lovers you have and the more haters you have. And they don't even have to be lovers and haters. Just, it's a lot of people that know about you. And they know about you without actually knowing you. So there's a lot of opinions flying around without consequence. And this is a man that many have opinions about, including Twitter employees, I'm sure. Uh, Jack, however, and other executives at Twitter have been very uh, pleasant been very, very optimistic about this investment saying hey love to have you here glad you love our product we want you here mm -hmm. let's uh hire you in the board of directors immediately pretty much and uh, and one thing that we can't dispute is that this individual ha has had success at other companies built companies sold companies landed rockets on boats in the ocean I'll do it. I mean, he didn't do it himself. And one of the things he does in interviews now recently is he says, we have a very talented team. He says it all the time. That's what you do. It's like PR. It's like when you play for, it's like when you're LeBron James, Michael Jordan, Connor McDavid. It doesn't matter the sport you play. When they come give you the interview after and they're like, my God, what you did was incredible. Then you, you go, we got a talented team. We That's what you say with us, right? That's right. We, I guess this show, Unbox Therapy, we got a talented team. Uh, me, I just show up. Me, yeah. I'm barely here. We got a talented team. Uh -huh. Everyone's uh, just clapping. They really, I mean, they really make me look good. It's, uh, I got nothing to do with it. Mm -hmm. You know, I get in here. You guys just, you stick me in a chair. You just shake me up. You're yeah. like, get it together. It's like, wake up. <laughs> I'm like, we got, a, we got a, a talented team. Someone said, <laughs> someone said Connor McDavid question mark in the, in the chat. That is uh, probably the number one hockey player in the world, right? There's a hockey reference. You see this cup, it says Tim Hortons. You know where you buy Tim Hortons? In Canada. You know what you do in Canada half the year? You skate on ice with blades on your feet. That's what you do. Yep. That's how I get to work. That's right. Uh, when you wake up, after you wake up in your igloo. Yes. Otis has skates too. You make your... Uh, I kind of like this. This just feels like a Curious George episode to me. You and, mm. and Otis skating here from your igloo. Yeah. Or cross-country skiing or something along these lines. Anyway, polarizing figure. When the, uh, 
when the news came out about Elon getting involved with Twitter, Twitter itself was uh, having its own kind of battles going on or the or individuals on Twitter not working at Twitter. Uh, be, people, people on one side of the spectrum were saying, yeah, now Trump's coming back. And people on the other side of the spectrum were like, don't mess with me. Trump comes back. I'm out of here. It was both sides of the spectrum. Mm. And so you have to assume that internally at Twitter, it's similar. Everything is political. Everything has the politics attached. Uh, news of Tesla chief executive Elon Musk taking a board seat at Twitter has some Twitter employees panicking over the future of social media firms' ability to moderate content, company insiders told Reuters. Within hours of the surprise disclosure this week that Musk, itself described free speech absolutist, acquired enough shares to become the top Twitter shareholder. Political conservatives began flooding social media with calls for the return of Donald Trump. The former U.S. president was banned from Facebook and Twitter after the January 6th Capitol riot over concerns around incitement of violence. Hmm. So question here. Would you want Donald Trump to be back on Twitter? Uh, here's the thing about just like booting people off completely. And we've ha actually had this exact conversation in the past, not, not relating to Trump. I don't even remember who it was about. Somebody else who was suspended temporarily yeah. is like, when individuals are removed from the public discourse or the popular websites, whatever, <laughs> which happen to be the, the discourse, social media <laughs> apps. What's that? Discourse, social media, like discord, the word. Discourse. Discourse. Discourse, discourse or discord. It's just chaotic. Um, so, so if you, if you remove a person completely and no one can access them anymore, but people you know are really big fans of these individuals, then all of a sudden they might go socialize in the in dark corners of the internet and become even even more isolated from one another, this variety of groups. Now I know you're seeing this thing, but I don't get it. You don't want to be what all this compact, uh, co uh, all, all this, uh, how am I not getting this word? Combat, not compact. I sound like a laptop from 19... <laughs> 94. Um, yeah, so you have all this uh, combat happening. You say, how can that be good? Well, at least these humans are inhabiting, even if it's virtual, a similar space. They know that one another exists. And maybe mm -hmm. every so often one of these crossovers leads to something productive. I don't know. I'm just stating the uh, possibility here. Mm. Uh, but definitely when you take when you take an individual with a huge following and you you sort of push them off it, it, they, there is a potential that some people um find themselves in a more radical situation than they were in previously so suspensions i think are good i think banning less so that would be my opinion on the matter banning less so and it's not just for donald trump that's just in general like and I, and i realize you would you would say Hey man, what about certain scenarios? What about uh, is there no scenario in which a person should be kicked off completely? Mm -hmm. I'm sure we can all figure out some types of scenarios in which we might all agree that somebody should be kicked off. But I'm just saying in more general terms, uh, I like the idea of suspensions over uh, complete exile, banning, yeah, yeah social media exile. Good word, Will. Mm. Exile. I mean, I, I agree. Mm. Um, I think freedom of speech is pretty important to everyone. And having a platform where everyone can uh, operate and communicate together mm. and have all the filthy stuff kind of just filthy. get filtered down. Yeah. Um, obviously, there's got to be moderation to it heavy moderation well i mean it's like imagine for example you you are in the presence of an individual who uh doesn't say a word they just sit there silently you're talking about lurkers no just 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 i'm just saying it's just a person over there right now i never saw him before i came in we start recording he's sitting right there there was no introduction no nothing well, what is he wearing he gets on the microphone he says i can't talk i'm banned and then it ends and i'm like well jesus man like I would almost rather know 
in some, even if I disagree with whatever he's going to say, I kind of rather know where he stands so I have some information. Mm -hmm. And uh, particularly if that group grows, you can imagine if your rules for banning or exile, if they, let's say they weren't very harsh to begin with, and all of a sudden you have piles and piles of people that are no longer, um, that no longer have access to social media. Or, 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 or just who sets the rules and what what are the rules? And it's just like it's a whole can of worms. But anyway, maybe this is where, uh, like, there still has to be some degree of moderation, obviously. And these are complex things that are, uh, thank goodness, not a thing that I have to figure out on a daily basis. I also don't think that they're things that Elon is going to figure out on a daily basis. You know, he's a busy guy. And I, I think he actually does like Twitter based on what I've seen. And I think most of this, the the uh, reason for this investment is, be, is because of how big of a fan he is of whatever um, the community is at the moment mm -hmm. above, above other pot potential incentives. Like, that's the way it feels to me. I don't know. When you get him on the show, we'll ask. All right. I'll do that. Uh, speaking, staying with Elon for a second, Tesla Cyber Rodeo live stream date and time announced. It's tonight. It is tonight and it's late, like all Tesla events. Um, it will be happening at 9 p.m. CT, Texas time. Austin, Texas, obviously. That's where it is. Uh, so that'll be uh, 10 p.m. for us here in the East Coast in North America. It'll be very, very late for a lot of other people in uh, Western Europe and such. But they always do their events late. And uh, there's been a little bit of discussion some speculation on what might take place here at this uh, party, at this celebration. The branding, I like. I like the idea of cyber rodeos. These are two things you not you don't expect to be together. Hmm. Uh, there was a shot, a drone shot of, um, are those drones? That uh, last photo there? This one right here? The little, no, the one with the little dots. Like, what are those lights? Anyway, I'm, I don't think they're drones. Uh, no, the shot I'm referring to is the one where you see a number of cars with covers on them that may or may not be used. Oh, it's a separate. Anyway, that's fine. Yeah, it's so, a separate article. It's fine. So this was a post that someone uh, had. Uh, I guess this is also from today or from yesterday. I believe this was yesterday. Either, either, either way, preparing for this cyber rodeo. And you can see the shapes of a variety of different Tesla vehicles that are, are probably going to be used for this event, could be used for this event, or they just hang out in that area regardless. And they have nothing to do with the event. But anyway, what we can see here based on the shapes is uh, two Tesla Cybertrucks. Uh, those look like Model Ys, 3s? I don't know. But definitely... Probably, probably cars that already exist, maybe mm -hmm. slightly new versions of it. Uh, we've also got maybe the old Roadster, because that's a convertible. looks like a convertible. You were the one that suggested maybe it's an old Roadster. Oh, maybe. Let's all get really excited and assume it's a new Roadster. Why don't we do that, Well, Sure, yeah. Uh, in front of that, you have a, a very fancy cover. It looks like an aquarium. And that, I guess, is a Model X. Mm -hmm. And then behind it, you say this is the mystery vehicle. Go ahead, Will. Yeah, I'm not too sure. Based on the silhouette and the shape, um, it doesn't look like any other vehicles. Um, it could be a new one. <gasps> or like a prototype or something. You heard it here first. Shout out 40 Fire, by the way. Yeah, maybe. Maybe it's a new one. You're right. The shape looks a little off. I think maybe it's just bunched up in the back. Could it just be a Model S? Mm, a more enhanced Model S? I don't know. I don't know. You're and right. There's other ones that's blanketed up. Yeah, there's a couple of other ones there. Maybe they will be used. Maybe there's some prototypes. Here's one thing that's for certain. Some cyber trucks are finally going to roll off the assembly line, and that's very exciting. Yes. Um... The I saw some people posting on Twitter uh, some notifications from Tesla that it was time for them to set up their delivery. That's crazy. That means the Cybertruck is finally going to be on the roads. Yeah. I mean, not all of them. Obviously, it's going to take time. Not all of them. But you're going to see these things bouncing around out there. And uh, I'm kind of pumped for that. It also means the one that I ordered is probably... Maybe not as far away as I thought. I don't know. 
Yeah, go check your emails. I know I don't have an email. Trust me. As soon as I saw somebody post, I went and checked my email. Oh. You know what happened to me today? Well, I'm going through the drive through mm. and uh, the lady, just after I pay, she goes, that's the new one. She says, that's the new one to me. And then I said, what, the phone? Because I got the, the Z Fold 3, and I thought when I tapped to pay, I thought that she was referencing this. And she's like, no, th this is a, a middle-aged woman, you know? She goes, no, the yoke. You got the oh. steering yoke. And I was like, I looked down and I'm like, it's like yeah, that's the like, yoke. I'm like, wow, you like the yoke. <laughs> I'm, I'm surprised. I'm, I'm glad, but I'm surprised. And you know what she says to me next? What? She goes, I want the Lexus one. Their Lexus is mm. going to do the yoke. And I was like, wow. wait a second. Wow, she's really on top it's of it. It's like, things. wait a second. What's going on here? Just caught me right off guard. But anyway, the uh, Cybertruck's going to be a different level. Yeah. An absolutely different level. This is really exciting. Very much so. Um, this was another cool little promo that they did. Tesla's Lone Star Flag Model Y formation in Giga Texas has been completed. That's fun. So they've uh, aligned a number of Model Ys in order to uh, make a Model Y version of the, uh, the Texas flag. You can see the star up there with the uh, five white vehicles in that shape, in that pattern. We have the uh, red vehicles down here at the bottom, white at the top. And this would not be an easy thing to do from a parking perspective, would it, Will? Does someone have a time lapse of this uh, this parking? No, they should. They should have a time lapse if there was ever a time for a time lapse. Oh, also, it's important to note that that event tonight uh, happening in Texas, uh, the rodeo, it, it, the doors open at 4, even though the live stream is at 9. Okay. So there's a lot of partying going on if you've got an invite. I don't have an invite. I mean, I'm, nope. not, I'm not even close to Texas right now. But if you've got an invite, you can get there a little bit earlier and have yourself a time, I think. I'm pretty sure. And maybe you can check out the Texas flag. Although, I feel like if you're on the ground, if, you don't, if you're not up in the air, it's not translating. You're just seeing a bunch of Model mm -hmm. Ys. Um. Elon's really into drone footage recently. Mm, that's this true. Is, uh, yeah, that's kind of cool. Big drone guy. Let me see. Oh yeah, it's uh, more drone footage. That's Giga a Texas huge getting detail, getting details Jeez. ready for Cyber Rodeo this morning. Here's some new images. It's also you know okay, so it's obviously a crazy scale to it, but then you, you realize how fast they built this thing. Don't you remember the news when they bought the land? It's not mm. that long ago, man. Mm -hmm. And they just whipped that baby up. They just whip up something. It's the size of 10 football fields or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm exaggerating. But it's it's enormous, whatever it is. It's really amazing to see. You love to see the progress. Is you that love, a cowboy hat? Yeah, that's it's a cyber rodeo. Oh, that's cool. You should know. Well, it's a cyber rodeo. <laughs> Uh, Biden administration holds EV industry meeting with Musk and Barra. Uh, well, there you go. How's that for recognition? You know, Musk was going back and forth with Biden for a while on social media saying, say the name, say the word Tesla. And Biden was much more into the GM and Ford at the time, mm -hmm. as far as words he was willing to say. Although there were other reasons because, uh, were there other reasons? I can't remember what the reasons were, but there were other reasons why he was mostly focusing on GM and Ford. Because mm -hmm. it was a, it was new jobs or I don't know. The Biden administration said senior officials held a meeting Wednesday with major automotive leaders, including Tesla Chief Executive Elon Musk and General Motor, Motors Chief Executive Mary Barra, to discuss electric vehicles and charging. Charging's a big deal, Will. Big, big deal. The administration said in a statement, there was broad consensus that charging stations and vehicles need to be interoperable and provide a seamless user experience no matter what car you drive. Or where you charge your EV. Well, I know uh, Musk has already talked about opening up the supercharge network for non-Tesla vehicles. Here's the thing. We're going to need a lot more chargers if that happens. Because every time I go to a supercharger, they're pretty much like almost all in use. Really? So if you start letting all the other EVs on there as well, we're going to need more chargers. Now, I'm not in the States. I'm, I'm over here. There's a couple of different banks. If the, the there's a setup in Markham, which is like a lot more chargers and the, the Vaughn Mills one is a lot more chargers but I was charging up in Barrie and it might only be seven or eight 
chargers. Okay. Now it's charging pretty quick. It's not like it used to be. It's charging pretty quick. But again, you try to imagine like where the bottleneck is right now. If everybody just switches over to electric, it's definitely there. Mm -hmm. It's going to be with the chargers. Um, There's certainly not as many of them as there are gas stations. Granted, you mostly charge at home. And I've discovered like in my uh, personal use case with the 500 kilometers on the Model S that I have, like it's never an issue. Mm. It's really never an issue. It's very rare. This issue only a road trip, right? Would be the time. I, I like day to day. Yeah, I would imagine you would um, top up at home. I actually don't have a charger at home right now. It only charges. Oh, you don't. Yeah, it only charges when I'm at work. Oh, and, but it still never matters. Mm. Um, I will have a charger at home, but even then, like I don't know. Right now, it's not even plugged into the charger because. It will charge, if it's on the daily, it wants to charge to around 500 kilometers, even though the actual full charge is like 520. Mm-hmm. And so in order to preserve battery health and, sure. and whatnot. So you, you can set it. If you know you're going to take a road trip, you can set for the extra. But otherwise, you don't want to be overcharging it. Mm-hmm. And so in this case, it's like pinned at 500 just on my daily routine. It's mm-hmm. never not at 500 um because of the just typical work hours so i don't even really that's the crazy part is i'm able to drive as a daily and i don't even have a charger at home just one at work is enough take more road trips man well in the summer i think that might happen yeah but then i might pull the van out and who knows it's a whole whole different ball game but uh anyways it seems like the administration is on board they want to create a national network of half a million chargers that's a big deal it's going to cost you but like, look, it's a coalition. You got Ford, Chrysler, uh, you got Lucid, and you got Nissan, and you got Mazda, and Hyundai, and Mercedes-Benz, and Kia, oh, Subaru, Toyota. Yeah, man, it's all happening. We're right in the middle of it right now. We are. By the time you get your Bronco, everything else will be electric. I know, and then I have to sell yeah. it immediately. Yeah, you're going to get like your $4. Bronco in 2026, and everybody drives a Cybertruck. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. I'm joking. I'm joking. Finland sees his $46 million worth of artwork headed to Russia. Ooh, the Finland-Russia story continues. I never thought this would be such a theme and such a trend, but it's just... I know we have some, uh, we have some people watching from Finland, so shout out Finland. I got you covered. Anything happens in Finland, I'm on top of it. You understand, Will? Finland news? I'm Mr. Finland. Okay. I hope that offends nobody. <laughs> I'm definitely not Mr. Finland, but I feel like uh, I might be able to. I might be able to have a time if I was to go to Finland. I would behave. I'm sure I would. I could become Mr. Finland. <laughs> Settle Possibly. down. <laughs> How does this work? 46 million worth of artwork headed to Russia? I guess it was being shipped through some type of port in Finland. It probably got there first. Here's the thing. Um, Russia's a really big country, but a lot of the population is on the west side of it. Mm -hmm. And so you can imagine if you were shipping something by boat, and you can bring up the geography. You know I'm loving the geography. Mm -hmm. But if you were shipping something by boat, and, and you're coming from Europe, you want to go up over the top. But you've got to get to Moscow. And if you see what I'm talking about, look where Finland is positioned over here. Look at, look at Finland right there. I don't know what you want to do. Well, maybe you don't want to come from the top. You're probably just coming through Denmark there, actually. Like, let's say you're shipping something by boat from Germany. We're just saying right now to Moscow. Like, you might go up to Finland. Or maybe you're not going to Moscow. Maybe you're going to St. Petersburg which is even closer. Give me a St. Petersburg on this map, Willie, dude, since we're Carmen San Diego right now. Where is it? You want me to type it in? <laughs> you can, or you could zoom in. Up to you. Uh, it's going to be right just south of Finland there uh, on the other side of the border. Look at that. Okay. okay. Damn, but the waterway would take you right there. So why you got to go to Helsinki? Why don't you just go all the way? Okay, let's just read the story and find out exactly what happened. But look at the proximity. When you start talking Russia, Finland, you start talking NATO, you start talking threats. Look at the proximity yeah. of Helsinki and St. Petersburg. That's close, man. Let's do a quick directions on how long it's going to take us to go from Helsinki to St. Petersburg. Just hit the directions button, bottom left, and give me a Helsinki at the top. And we're going to get to the bottom of this right now. We need to know proximity. 
we need to let everybody know because this is, it's very intimate. It's a four hour drive, four and a half hours. I don't know, maybe there's traffic right now, but whatever. Four and a half hours is the, uh, oh, wait a sec. Four and a half hours is train. It's uh, just over five hours by car right now, avoiding tolls. Mm -hmm. But anyway, yes, close proximity. Now let's go find out how they seized the, uh, now that we've done our geography lesson for the day, Carmen San Diego. Uh, yeah, let's, let's get back. Let's figure out how they seized it. Finland seized tens of millions of dollars uh, worth of artwork on its way to Russia due to the European Union sanctions imposed on the country. Finnish Customs announced Wednesday the agency took hold of the artwork between April 1st and April 2nd, April Fool's. The paintings and sculptures were in three shipments that came from Italy and Japan, passing through Finland on its way to Russia. Sanctions. That would be why it would go to Finland first, because they're like, uh, we know you're, sir, we realize you have an order here, but I don't know if you noticed, but like we can't ship directly to Russia anymore. Finland's like, I'll take that. No, not Finland, because they seized it, but the shipper was like, okay, I got you, I got you sorted. Let me tell you how I'm going to do this. I'm going to go to Finland first. I'm going to go down there to the customs. I'm going to make sure this gets through. We're going to hop over in Finland. Then I'll bring it on ground or via train or via car from Finland to Russia to make sure it gets in there. Because we got millions of dollars worth of artwork here. Mm -hmm. It's coming from Italy. It's coming from uh, Japan. It's coming from... A couple of Banksy's? All types of places. Yeah. The EU sanctions on Russia include a ban of the transportation of the works of art, allowing Finland to seize the property. It's important that the enforcement of sanctions works effectively. The enforcement of sanctions is part of our normal operations, and we always direct our controls based on risks. Shipments that have now come under criminal investigation were detected as part of our customary enforcement work. 46 millis. 46 millis worth of artwork. The artwork came from the Hermitage Museum and Sartskoye Selo State Museum in St. Petersburg, along with the State Trek Tretyakov Gallery in Moscow. Wow. So I guess I don't know. They're what they're gonna they're they're going. The cake came from. Oh, it was on its way out. What's going on here? Oh, they're on its way back. It was loaned to Italy. Hmm. The artwork was on its way back. Mm. it's a weird world the artwork world isn't it because a you lot of insurance moving things around 46 million dollars you just loan it out and then a war breaks out and you can't get it back mm -hmm. you just one museum to the other you're, you're like oh yeah you can have sure you can sh uh, have an exhibit in italy and show this stuff off or japan or whatever and then invasion takes place or uh in ukraine and yoink I don't know. What do they do? They, what do they do? They hold it for a little bit? I guess it's got to get back there at some yeah, it point. Has to, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know, man. Yeah. Korean doctor says those who haven't contracted COVID-19 have no friends. That's a real statement. Well, I know you're laughing right now. I'm not laughing. I was just like, it's, it's kind of ridiculous, no? So this is a uh, post on Reddit, and it says, the caption is, as an introvert, I feel murdered. Right. <laughs> <laughs> because he went straight for the jugular yeah straight for the soft spot uh with his comments it was a post he put on social media i believe it was on facebook i can't remember it was on social media and he was basically trying to imply that covid is so rampant right now that if you've had any contact with anyone then you're getting it and the only way you haven't gotten it is because you have no friends or no social life you do you feel attacked, Will? <laughs> you feel attacked, don't you? Mm, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, uh, maybe just type in that headline because there's a uh, an article about it on Insider. But I didn't want you to miss the um, by the, Rebecca Moon too. I didn't. Moon. I, double Moon. Yeah, that's a double Moon right there. I didn't want you to miss out on that wonderful caption. The introvert portion of the oh, caption. Um, what would it be? Uh, Korean doctor. There you go. This one. Uh, the comment by South Korean doctor Ma Sang Yuk was made on a day when the country recorded more than four lock cases in a day. You found an Indian news source. Oh, good. Uh, do just do the insider one. Um, in the 
codependent. Yeah, that'll do. Do that one. Sh uh, shout out Jameson, by the way. D uh, he deleted the comments after the backlash. People said, how dare you? I haven't had COVID yet, and I have tons of friends. So how dare you uh, attack me in such a way? Mm. But I, I guess it was offensive enough that he felt the need to take it down. Oh. The adults who have not yet been infected, here's this is the exact quote, okay. and it was on Facebook. That's all we need. Okay. Because he didn't necessarily say it exactly that, uh, like uh, the quote there. The adults who have not yet been infected with COVID-19 are those who have interpersonal problems. <laughs> I don't know if that's better or worse. It was for the jugular. I don't know if that's better or worse. He is the vice president of the Korean Vaccine Society. Yeah. Is there data that backs this? I guess so, right? Well, the numbers are just nutty right now. I don't know if you've been yeah. following at all. They're just like hundreds of thousands of people mm -hmm. every day. Like It's just, it's everybody. Yeah. And I know anecdotally, even just like us in around here, it's we're getting messages and... Yeah. So... Yeah, I, I, I mean, it might not be the nicest way of saying something, but it kind of seems inevitable. You know, I put a poll on Twitter. I said, I said, uh, I said, do you, have you had COVID-19 at this point? Mm -hmm. And then instead of putting yes and no as the options in the poll, I put probably and probably not. And the reason for that is because it's hard to know, right? Like you, you're not testing all the time. You yeah. had asymptomatic stuff going on. The people who have had it for sure know they've had it, but there's a lot of people who think, yeah, I've probably had it at some point because of exposure or whatever else. Mm -hmm. But it was an exact 50-50 representation in my Twitter poll. And I think it had quite, I think it had a couple of I think there were a few people that partook in that poll. Yeah. Can you imagine it landed right on a coin flip? So mm -hmm. anyway. Yeah, it's out there. It's out there. Big way. Uh, the Braves will sell a. This is a Mo story, isn't it? This Look is a Mo story. Mo from from whatever vacation he's on. He's uh, on the beach. He's still updating like, us on what matters to him. Braves will sell a hundred and fifty one dollar burger at Truist Park during the twenty twenty two MLB season. A hundred and fifty one dollar burger. That's going to have to be something really special. A Wagyu beef patty. With cage free pan fried eggs, gold leaf wrapped foie gras, grilled cold water lobster tail, heirloom tomato, Tillamook cheddar cheese, and truffle aioli on a toasted buttered bun served with Parmesan waffle fries. Wow. $151. That is going to be quite an experience. Yes. I don't think you're biting it, though. But I'm looking at a picture of it right now. I feel like you got to pull out a couple utensils. Yeah, it's very high. You got lobster on there, man. You got gold leaf wrapped foie gras. Look <laughs> lobster at Lobster tail. Look at it. Um, Is they, that they skimped out on the bun, though. Come on. What are you going to do with the bun? Got to bathe it in, you know. What do you got to do with it? unicorn butter or something <laughs> uh, it's just like a regular you're talking about you're bun. talking about cage-free unicorns yes you're talking about uh organic unicorn of course yeah uh i guess this is one way to enhance the experience of going to the ball game but for me it just doesn't really feel like a baseball game type of food it's no, just a maybe little a hot too dog? fancy for me yeah here. So, but I, I listen, I don't know. Maybe you're one of these people you go to the game all the time and you need a way to mix it up and you want to you need to have something new every year. Mm -hmm. Maybe sitting at the booth. Yeah, you just uh you're just you're spoil yourself you're, a you're bit. just saying, you know what? I'm gonna have an experience right now. Uh-huh. Uh anyway, is, scroll, it, is that a Dave Chappelle reference? I don't know, is it? With uh his latest comedy special with the trans. I didn't watch it, so I don't think if okay. it is, then it's sub. It's not even subconscious; yeah. it's an unconscious. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, scroll down. Why? Why is it one hundred fifty-one dollars? The one hundred fifty-one is a nod to the organization's one hundred and fifty-one year existence. The the Braves began as the Boston Red Stockings back in eighteen seventy-one, and then I guess they moved to Atlanta at some point. 
Wow. So, oh, look at this. If you want to add $25,000 to your bill, you can get the burger with an actual World Series ring. What? Oh, oh my God. That's an. You can just buy those? That's an Instagram post. What? I don't know. For 25 no grand? I don't know, man. Well, it's like a, a, a replica. It wouldn't be personalized like how it right. is for the real players, right? The, the players have their number on it, and each one is, mm -hmm. is custom. You would pro yours would be a bit more generic, but you want to talk about getting a, having an experience. You get the one fifty one dollar burger, and then you get a World Series <laughs> ring on the side. Good lord! Yeah. Well, that sounds delicious. There you go, Will. Epic and Lego partner to build a metaverse for kids. Of course, they do. Mm. It's just what kids need—an opportunity to get into the metaverse ASAP. Yes. Forget about this whole, this real world stuff, all these problems. They're aiming for the kids. Nothing bad ever happens in the metaverse. Join us today in the metaverse where everything is wonderful all the time. 93.2 FM. Uh, now, you know what? Actually, when I just said that, I realized I may have been inspired by The weekend's new music video. Did you watch that yet? Yes. With the Jim Carrey at the end? Oh, I didn't watch it until there. <laughs> the whole point of this video you got is what happens at the end. Really? Yes. Oh. Just... I, I saw them dancing. I was like, I get the point. That's the weekend, man. He's fooling you. Oh, okay. Have you been following? Well, I got fooled. Have you been following any of this stuff? I don't care. <laughs> Jeez. Will? Where's the attention span? Oh. I got none. You ask I live in the metaverse. You ask people to hang out with us here for an hour, and yet you can't get to the end of his four-minute music video. Okay, tell me why Jim Carrey was there. Well, I don't want to. I can't spoil this now. Uh, I don't have time to watch. Well, it. he's got a whole thing about like time and aging, and 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 like uh, the passage of time. The weekend. It's been a theme throughout his last few videos. Okay. And in this case, it's like. It's like fading away from him, and the girl that he's dancing with. I mean, I'm, I'm, I feel like people are gonna go watch this now, but like ev everything is becoming further away, and his hands are old, and he appears to be on an operating table, and Jim Carrey is the doctor or the surgeon. Mm -hmm. It's pretty. It's pretty cool. I recommend it. Whatever, go check it out. It feels typical, like what Will was saying, but that's why it's a shock when it has the twist towards the end. And Will's really feeling like he should have just stayed around now mm. because he's like, I should have seen this twist. Yeah. No, you're not. I thought I got the picture, but I, apparently not. But that's the whole There's point. I'm saying he, he's to trying it. to, yeah, that's the whole point, right? Yeah. But he's had this thing going on for a while now. It's like the young him versus the old him. Oh, right. Yeah. 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 Anyway. Uh, yeah. So metaverse for kids. I think that's Ariana Grande or at least it, is reminiscent of her, sort of, to me. I think this is just Fortnite. Oh, okay. So, well, because of Epic. Epic Epic has been interested in this stuff, though, with the concerts and so forth inside of Fortnite mm -hmm. and kind of really uh, leaning into this idea of socializing in the game as opposed to the game being the game. But mm -hmm. instead, like, this it's is... a hangout. Where, this is where you had... Exactly. This is where you and your friends are. You don't even, like the game mechanics, when you're hosting a concert, it goes out the window, everybody's just standing around watching the concert. Yeah. And they keep thinking of, of ways to enhance that. Lego, obviously, an enormous brand as well. We are excited to come together to build a space in the metaverse that's fun, entertaining, and made for kids and families. Details are scarce, but the companies say that whatever it is they end up building will be designed as a family-friendly virtual space from the beginning. The Lego Group and Epic Games will combine their extensive experience to ensure that the next iteration of the internet is designed from the outset with the well-being of kids in mind. So they're saying, trust us. We know how to raise your kids. You don't, you idiot. Mm. Put them in the safety of the metaverse. Don't let them be out there in the world risking their physical selves. Mm. And then everybody's going to jump on people on board and be like, I love it. I love it. 
Metaverse. They're so safe. Metaverse. They're so safe in there. Yeah. Nothing can happen to them in there. Meanwhile, vegetative state. They're, they, they, they're not sure why they feel so unfulfilled because their physical body isn't budging. Just At constant drooling. End of the day, they're just glitching yeah. out. <laughs> Parents keep clapping. <laughs> safety, safety, safety. Well, yeah, you have a literal bubble in meta. Yeah, It's man. a bubble, you know? Man, people will trade a lot for safety, a lot. Nowadays, yes. A lot. But meanwhile, you think about your life and all of the electrifying moments have some degree of risk attached, some degree of potential for failure, which is why they are electric, those moments. You know that feeling of adrenaline when you encounter the unknown, unknown outcomes, difficult tasks, competition, risk? Mm -hmm. Safety! Uh, shout out DJ Medusa. Appreciate it. Okay. <laughs> um, mm. I would imagine like Star Wars would be fun. Like, you know, they're talking about Lego Star Wars in there. It'd be kind of fun. Just a no, I got nothing in. against. I got nothing against Lego. I got nothing against uh, <laughs> uh, Star Wars or anything else. I just think the idea of developing a safe metaverse for for even younger people is yeah. It's, it's I'm just you know, playing devil's advocate. Right. Kind of jump in. Right. Maybe, um, you know, across the world is like your aunt or your uncle. They have VR goggles and yeah. then you build something together in Lego. Yeah. It's a nice experience. Okay. You know? All right. Devil's advocate. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you want to take a break? Yeah, let's do it. We'll be right back. We got even better stuff. Don't go anywhere. This episode sponsored by HelloFresh. Take the stress out of mealtime. Did you know, Will, that HelloFresh is America's most popular meal kit? I think so. I may have told you that before. Mm -hmm. It's important for you to know, though, because I'm trying to help you out. I'm trying to put food on your table and only the most nutritious stuff, like a chicken and pepper cavatappi Milano. You don't even know what I said there. So if you're doing your beef flauta supreme, you're going to have a pico de gala and smoky crema. And you understand when you start saying words like that, all of a sudden you, your senses start. Uh, it's go, like I'm in Mexico. In, you start to smell things and taste things and impress other people because somebody comes over and they go, excuse me, is this a pico de gala and smoky crema? And you say, absolutely. That's what I did. And what are you doing in my house? That's true. <laughs> uh, no, you cannot have my flautas that yeah. I just made. Uh, yeah, listen, it's uh, it, the variety continues to expand every single time I talk about it. Like, look at that. You got a pork and veggie bibimbap. <laughs> <laughs> With carrots and pickled scallions. <laughs> Go ahead, Will. <clears throat> Lovely Go. Korean dish. Go ahead, Amazing. Will. Go ahead. Very good. You want to say it differently? <laughs> listen to it. It just sounds appetizing. Look at the way they got the scallions on there. Uh, some of them take a little bit longer. It's up to you. You just pick what your investment level is. There's even some that are done in 15 minutes, like that one pan beefy black bean taco. So it's like, it's unbelievable. I like that one even labels easy cleanup, which is a big deal for me. I don't have time for all this. So mm. I'm going to make it on my own. I'm going to do it in 15. I'm going to have the easy cleanup. I'm going to eat what I should be eating, which is something healthy. Mm -hmm. Hello fresh. Get farm fresh seasonal produce and easy to make recipes deliver right to your door every week. It's all about convenience with HelloFresh. Not only do the ingredients come with pre-portioned, so you're not overbuying or wasting food, but it's easier than ever to get filling meals on the table in a snap with options like family-friendly or quick and easy recipes. I decided to go with vegetarian, so I got the Mediterranean Portellini. It has a sweet bell pepper taste, 30 minutes, and you're done. Quick and simple. Go to HelloFresh.com slash Lulater16 and use the code Lulater16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. That's HelloFresh.com slash Lulater16 and use the code Lulater16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. Thank you to HelloFresh. We're also sponsored by Honey. The searching the internet for the best coupon so you don't have to. You simply add this to Chrome. It is free. 
Look at all the Chrome store reviews, 167,000. You add it to your browser in seconds. You just go about your daily business shopping as you normally would on the internet. And then Honey does the work in the background. If they find working codes, they are applied and you just get the savings instantly. There's an example there. You just save 20 bucks and make sure that it's an active coupon. No one wants to search for coupons manually, but you're definitely doing shopping online. Hmm. They have 30,000 different stores in the inventory there, including the likes of uh, Lenovo and Finish Line. Forever 21 is in there. JC Penny. I mean, 30,000. I'm not going to list them all. You could be ordering pizza. You could be picking up shoes. It's automatic coupons that are added without any extra time, uh, any extra time being uh, taken of yours, which is very important. Your time. Yes, very important. So look at this, Honey Gold. A reward program is in there now too. I never saw that before. Thanks to Honey Gold, you earn gift cards too. A loyalty program where you spend less and score big so you're saving money and you can get these gift cards they just keep making it better uh, like I said it's a thing that you do once you add it to your Chrome browser it is free to do and then it just takes care of it in the background mm -hmm. no brainer some people might say no brainer I would so I'm in the market for new Brixton hats and I found a site to get me good honey deals. Super easy to use, just one click and it tells you how much you save per purchase. So now I'm just waiting on the shipment and excited to show off show. Brixton hats don't come cheap and I was able to save $50 with honey. Honey doesn't just work on desktop, it works on your iPhone as well. Just activate it on Safari on your phone and save on the go. If you don't already have honey, you can be missing out on deals. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a favor and supporting this show. Get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash later. That's joinhoney.com slash later. I always love that transition, Will, at the end there. What? That straight back. We're back and we're back. Shout out to sure someone are. somewhere and to James King. All right, sticking with the metaverse for a moment, one moment longer, we've been wondering when uh, Facebook was going to change the name of the Oculus Quest like officially on retail packaging. And then and they hit us up and they were like, yo, do you want a, an Oculus Quest 2? And we're like, we already have it. Mm -hmm. And then they're like, no, no, no. We, think we want to just send you one. We're like, okay. I actually requested for two. Oh, well, whatever, yeah. whatever it They're was. Like, yeah, okay. And, uh, and we were wondering, hey, what, what might be the incentive? Like, why might they be hitting us up just to send us more of these things? And I got to thinking, okay, maybe they got too much retail packaging mm. with the Oculus branding that they have to expedite the process of uh, getting rid of all that in order to move on to the meta branding now. Mm-hmm. And I don't know how much inventory buildup there would have been. And you might say, why don't you just take it out the boxes and redo the boxes? But it's not really how it works. They, there's warehousing and mm -hmm. it's already been moved around and a lot of the expenditure is already in it. And so you're like, I don't know, maybe uh, influencer Willie Do will uh, talk about it if we send him another one. Mm -hmm. I'll take it all. Influencer Do. Uh, but, but apparently that's changing now. We have MetaQuest 2 boxes appearing on store shelves Oh, with the rebranding still incomplete. Interesting. It is in interesting. Incomplete, because, but like uh, partially complete? You can kind of see it's just the logo. <laughs> so you would think that the oh. rebranding would be like a complete box redesign. No, no. But it's uh, it's just the logo. Walmart now carrying MetaQuest 2 at this store in Bentonville. Um. Yeah, you're right. It's the exact same. No, it's not exact same because if you look at the uh, the picture, the photography, and I don't know, maybe they did in Photoshop, but the picture of the actual Quest, the headset, the meta logo is on there now. Oh, right. Yeah. So they had to do either new photography or Photoshop that portion. Mm -hmm. Color remained the same. But it's not like the box is black or something. No, no, no. no, no. Just, yeah, you're right. You know, it's just basic... Uh, branding like the logo that's it so i wonder why did why else did they say it's uh, not complete how do you know they just don't want to do it like that spotted by uploads uh ian hamilton 
Meta has rolled out the freshly rebranded Quest 2s to Walmart, one of its largest retail partners. So far, online retailers like Amazon, Target, Newegg, and yes, also Walmart's website still list the headset as Oculus. It doesn't seem the company is worried about any of the self-inflicted brand confusion either as the newly dubbed Meta Quest 2 oddly sits right next to a stack of the headsets in its original Oculus packaging. I see. So that's the per reason it's incomplete. If you look at the final photo, then you'll notice they just stocked it right next to the Oculus headset. And now it's mass confusion <laughs> for buyers. Although I'm looking at the pricing down below. Is there a deal if you just get the one that's called Oculus? Is that $299 versus $399? <laughs> no, they mention it here. Oh, okay. I think it's um, a bigger size. Look a little closer, you can see the 256 gigabyte version of the MetaQuest 2 price at 400 is also still labeled on shelves as Oculus. Well, this is going to take some time, but it is a bit messy, to be honest. And you're right, Will. If they had have done an entirely new design on the package, and then it would be less confusion about which one you're actually getting. But also, from a hardware perspective, the hardware didn't change, right? So that's, I hope not. So do you even care if yours says Oculus or Meta? You might even want yours to say Oculus mm -hmm. at this point because it's kind of collector. Yes. It, like it's gone. It'll never come back. I'm still, I kind of lament that a little bit. I like the, the word Oculus. It's cool. It was, yes. Maybe cooler than Meta. Anyway. UFC, Formula One, and WWE could be the next acquisition targets for streaming giants. Good luck with that. I don't think, oh man, try and pull off one of those deals. You know what that would be worth? Any of those three mm -hmm. niche sports organizations such as UFC, WWE, and Formula One could be alluring acquisition targets for big streaming companies like Disney and Netflix. Disney nearly acquired the UFC in 2016, sources said. Well, because Disney has ESPN and mm -hmm. ESPN had the deal. Buying a sports league would enable a company to control expensive licensing rights that seem to increase with each renewal. Well, didn't, didn't, doesn't the WWE have its own thing anyway? Yeah, it's a network. For all streaming? On its own. So they would go to zero, so the deal would have to be enormous for them. UFC has Fight Pass, which is sort of like that, but they also have TV deals. Mm -hmm. Are they still with ESPN, or did they? are they with somebody else now? Um, UFC? Endeavor? Endeavor is who, who bought the uh, UFC okay. uh, in 2016, yeah. Disney and the UFC had negotiated broad terms of a deal in which the entertainment giant would acquire the combat sports company for around $4.3 billion. Mm, I guess Endeavor, the Endeavor deal was bigger. Disney, which owns the majority of sports broadcast network ESPN, has toyed with the idea of buying sports leagues for years. One of the people said then Disney CEO Bob Iger was the model executive for brilliant intellectual property acquisitions, buying Pixar, Lucasfilm, and Marvel. And Marvel deals sure definitely looking good. Mm -hmm. uh, however, he nixed the potential deal with the UFC. He thought it was maybe not a Disney brand did a little, maybe a little too much blood and maybe a little too mature or something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Too much Connor. And two years later, Disney's ESPN paid $1.5 billion for UFC TV in a five-year deal. Well, okay, there you go. You don't even have to buy the whole thing. You can get, I mean, these deals are worth billions of dollars just to broadcast it. Mm -hmm. That deal immediately increased the value of UFC to $7 billion. Yeah, but you see, you got to get it online and you got to get it streaming and you got to make it simple for me. And if I'm only going to, here's the thing. If I'm only going to have one of these streaming products, like if it's Netflix or Disney or whoever else, HBO Max or whatever, if one of these streaming serv services was capable of cornering the market for one of these leagues. With a lucrative deal. You really, possible. you hung on that lucrative. Yeah. UFC, NASCAR, Formula One, or WWE, you immediately move that entire fan base to that yes. streaming service. Maybe with a little bit of aggravation for those that don't want to pay for whatever reason. But in many cases, they're already paying, like WWE, mm -hmm. uh, UFC. I don't know if Formula One probably might have its own streaming service mm -hmm. too. So that would be an enormous deal. Yeah, I can't imagine have like this happening. But man, if you know Netflix got a hold of UFC or something like exclusively mm -hmm. that's crazy like all these streaming um applications they need something like this like something that's live I think would live be. and um when it comes to sports fans it's so different than like a movie or something mm -hmm. the 
your entire identity is like associated with. I mean, you can be a super fan of Star Wars or something, but like if you're a basketball fan, that's just how you perceive yourself. You're like, I just know, but I'm just a basketball fan. That's it. Mm -hmm. Or football or whatever, hockey or F1 or. And so if your entire identity is threatened by the fact that in order to maintain your fandom, you must go to this other platform, man. That's a pretty strong pull for your monthly money. No doubt about it. That's why Disney's acquisitions of IP were so important. Mm -hmm. Because Marvel and Star Wars are like, as they're as close as you're going to get in the fictional realm to brands like sports. Mm -hmm. But it would be a totally different uh, type of project for these companies, and they'd have to do it well because the, these fans are... Uh, they're, they they want things to be a certain way. Yeah. In the chat says F1 has F1 TV. Right. So that's a channel. And then apparently uh, in the U.S. it's on ESPN as well. So, mm -hmm. but even you, you're beca you're an F1 fan now because of Netflix. So it goes to show you. Yeah. It goes to show you they throw it on they throw uh, Drive to Survive and now Willie Do's all he's on board. Yeah. I haven't checked it out yet, but I will. Over 3,500 pounds of cheese worth $23,000 stolen by gang in huge cheese heist. This reminds me of the maple syrup heist. Yes. Which I, I watched a little documentary on that. You, you People would be surprised at the value of just mm -hmm. uh, everyday items that in volume or fancy items like maple syrup or certain types of cheeses. You know, it takes a long time to make some of these aged cheeses. Mm -hmm. You come with a heist, 23 grand. Yes. Now, if you are one of these gang members yeah. that's in the heist, um, would you try Heisting. the cheese? I got to try Or it. would you save it? I mean, you got to try. You got to make sure it's uh, what you're looking for, you know, a little sample. <laughs> I mean, you're heisting anyway, so why not? Okay, yeah. The robbery took place at Torin Polderkas Dairy Farm. In the Netherlands last week, the farm lose, losing out on an estimated $23,000 when the group of well-organized cheese thieves broke in and made off with a bus full of product. And look at that cheese. You see how aged that stuff has to be? This stuff can That's take... That's the good stuff. ...can take years, man. Yeah. It's, it's, it's crazy. Like, you can't just turn around and be like, oh, I'm just going to make a bunch more cheese. No, because time mm -hmm. plays such a significant role. And the stuff maintains its value because imagine these sellers, they go to the smaller supermarkets. Those supermarkets want the cheese. Mm -hmm. There's a limited supply of the stuff. They cut deals and all of a sudden now you're turning it into, into cash. Mm -hmm. Right? Like it, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be a hard thing to find buyers for. Yeah. And it's untraceable, is it not? Like I mean, yeah. I see they have codes like sort of... Uh, stuck to the side here but you would just remove those you would portion this up and then how do you trace where it came from although probably like a really good cheese eater like an aficionado would be like i know what farm this came from mm -hmm. that's stolen cheese right there don't you dare serve me that stolen cheese that's that good good yeah exactly and then it's even better because it's like forbidden cheese <laughs> <laughs> you give me the forbidden yeah. cheese uh, Decker said that cheeses can be attractive loot for gangs because of their value, and it tends to be transported to other countries, especially those in Eastern Europe mm -hmm. and Russia, where it can be sold at a cut price. In this incident, Decker claimed that the group had already explored the farm shop a few days before, sculping it out, so they knew exactly what to pack before carrying out the heist. Yeah, they get the most aged, aged stuff. Yeah. That's, uh, well, that's I, sad. I feel bad for the farmers, yeah. that's. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm sure they have insurance, but... Your whole like brand name and and your whole uh, you know reliability. You got your buyers, the supermarkets that were expecting this stuff, and yeah, that definitely sucks. But it's nice looking cheese, no doubt. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, I found this clip. Okay, let me tell. You, let me ask you if you agree with this or not. Um, many people look at old footage of like different eras, like the 90s, 80s, 70s, whatever, and think that people in those eras look older at younger ages than they do now. I agree with that. 
<laughs> look older, and mm -hmm. then nowadays they look younger. So anyway, this post is now I understand why teens look like 30-year-olds in the movies. And this is a, a Reddit post, but there's a video clip uh, which looks like a kind of amateur video from a high school in the 90s. And you can play some of it here. So these are, these are I don't know about the music. You don't need it. These are high school students in the 90s. Oh my God. <laughs> the way that they dress is very 90s, but their face looks very old. Right. They look like they're in their 30s. <laughs> so you agree then? Yeah. Now, which, per which guy here do you feel uh, looks the oldest? It was the thumbnail guy. This guy? Oh, the, that guy? Or which guy? Oh, the guy in the... Uh, yeah, under, this guy. This guy, yeah. This one looks like uh, like uh, someone's dad or something. Like there's a lot of shaving going on there. I think mainly because the, I don't know, his jaw the jawline. is chiseled or something. Now, uh, there were there's a lot of, uh, how about these dance moves right here, by the way? Oh, yeah. Classic. Uh, there's a couple things I want to mention about this clip. So first of all, yes, the individuals that were chosen in this clip are definitely older looking. However... I think it's important to note that probably the more popular individuals would probably be more likely to turn towards the camera or be featured in the video. Mm. And, and sometimes that means that those are the, those could be the jocks or sports uh, enthusiasts or whatever, who maybe they're more likely to be um, working out or lifting weights or whatever. It's not going to be the introverted types and, uh, this is anyway this is the conversation the reddit thread that maybe there was like a kind of skew to mm -hmm. the type of people featured in the in the video right now the other thing to mention these dudes look 27 yeah some of them do the other thing to mention is clothing which you already mentioned yeah clothing can really influence you because when you see it as an older style or a style that you would normally see on somebody older now mm -hmm. or more recently then you just kind of make that association but here's the other piece that i want to add to it uh no smartphones so when you look at their reaction to the camera they all kind of like put on a little show because they're not used to being on camera nobody's like hey get the camera away from me yeah nobody's like hey don't point it at me they're all kind of into it in a different way Mm -hmm. because there's not smartphones all over the place in the 90s. So it's a whole different atmosphere. It's a whole different vibe. They're having a time. There's a lot of smiling going on. I'm not going to lie. Uh -huh. It's a lot of smiling. Now, other people said that maybe because they're not playing a bunch of video games and stuff, maybe they're also outdoors more often. Maybe they're doing more physical activity because of that. Hmm. And so because they're all in good shape too. Like you got to be noticing this. Yeah. Like, you can't find... And it's it's like a number of reasons, like you said. It's not just one. Maybe. But there's a lot of speculation. Now, uh, people say that maybe it's also... It could be, like, a weird perception thing that we have. That if you grew up in the 2000s or something, then people in the 90s look old. And if you grew up in the 90s, people in the 80s look old. Mm. Older. Or whatever. You know, this kind of weird, like... Mm -hmm. time shift that takes place but these clips are mind-boggling when you if you just go on youtube there's a, an abundance of clips from different eras of just kind of casual high school footage and some it is, guy with the camcorder that's it and they would be last day of high school 1993 yes. or something and it would have like 10 million views and it would just be pure nostalgia and these individuals just appear to be so different than individuals nowadays and i'm always intrigued by this but uh certainly this clip these people look older than what you might expect and maybe some people watching this are in high school right now and you yeah. can you can let me know if uh, if these guys look much older than uh, what you might be there's also a range too because i don't know if you remember coming into high school in like grade nine the the grade 12s would look like you know, intimidating or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like they they were more obviously more developed. Mm -hmm. So there's a range in high school because yeah. that's the period of time that people are doing a lot of their growing. Mm -hmm. 
growth spurts and all. So like puberty. if you were if you were showing grade nines in this in this video, it would be different than if you're showing grade twelves. Sure. Or something like that. Uh shout out Mal. Thanks for the gas money. Thank you. Oh, okay. Now here's one. Uh this is a very another really good uh subreddit. Win stupid prizes. It's called win stupid prizes. So I'm sure Will you can guess what might take place here. Oh, by the way, there were other conspiracies about testosterone and how using plastics has diminished the amount of testosterone in mm. males during puberty and, and that maybe uh, maybe people actually were maturing differently or are maturing differently now. Anyway, wow. anyway that's enough of all that. It's, go read the thread if you're curious about all the different interpretations as to whether or not this is possible. Uh, win stupid prizes. This is a sub dedicated to gifts and videos of people playing stupid games and then winning stupid prizes. You can go ahead and play this one. The title is playing with fire. You have a snare drum. They pour some something flammable on it. And uh, it doesn't go well, oh, obviously. Geez. So, uh, I think they wanted the snare drum to be on fire as they were playing, but it had this, uh, uh, flammable, uh, whatever, fl uh, whether it's like, what is it? It's not gasoline. It looks just like alcohol, but it's very flammable, whatever it is. High grade alcohol of some kind. Mm. But the guy who goes to light it, you can see the, the, the spray coming up on his sleeve because they don't stop drumming when he pours it on. So he pours and look at the spray. It's hitting him. It's right. hitting the guy's hand. So when you light it, you're going down. And these guys go up in flames completely. Yeah. Oh, uh, man. So definitely a stupid game to play with the flames. And I, you know, that would be a, you would have a lasting effect from that thing right there. Some damage. You gotta be careful when you play. Don't, don't you, I mean, everybody knows this. Don't play with fire. Everybody has a story. Do you have a story from your childhood where somebody played with fire and it didn't, didn't work out? Yeah. Fireworks, I guess. Yeah, every, well. Everybody has a story, man. Mm -hmm. flames flames don't get along uh, nobody gets along with flames oh yeah japanese company develops possibly the most difficult ever rubik's cube impossible mm. this you or mo well this is me go ahead well um i'm learning to solve a rubik's cube i mean for years now i'm still trying to figure it out mm -hmm. <laughs> um and uh this just made it more difficult, and it's nothing that's um, like futuristic. There's no tech involved. It's literally um, these tiles are color changing, oh, depending God. on how you look at it at certain angles. It's kind of like that holographic film where it would turn like blue if one angle is like tilted, mm. and then turn red. Um, and there is a true color to these um, tiles, but what makes it really hard is like these speed solvers have to remember um, these tiles, these tile colors, which is very confusing. This if sounds so frustrating. If you're moving it really <laughs> it fast. It sounds so frustrating. Yeah. Uh, there are a few, wait a second. There are a few puzzles as enduring as the Rubik's Cube. The game itself and the fundamental mechanics haven't changed drastically over the years. Uh, go give me the next paragraph. As a result, Mega House developed the Rubik's Cube Impossible, standard Rubik's Cube, except for the fact that some of the color squares change colors depending on the angle you look at them. Can, can you play a little bit of the clip? Or mm -hmm. Okay, let's play a little bit. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That first part is all you need to see. Uh -huh. The first part of it, terrifying. So, it's like, looking at it with one angle... It's every face is all the colors are completely different. Like you have minute colors of like purple and dark purple mm -hmm. or like, you know, orange and light orange. Dude. And uh, I'm, I'm frustrated and I'm not even trying to do it. Look at the way when they shift it. Oh, my God. Oh. <sighs> Like, uh, you know what it is? 
I think, is people remember the original challenge of just solving the easy version, and mm -hmm. then they become so proficient that they want to have well, yeah. that feeling again. This uh, is of for true the speed, challenge. The speed uh, solvers. You know what? Even with the color changing, they remain kind of in the same. No, they don't. I was going to say they remain in the same color palette, but they don't. Um, they're very similar. That's what makes it really hard. Good Lord. But, I keep uh, this thing away from me. I want this thing nowhere. Okay, I want yeah. this thing nowhere near me. Are you picking one up or are you cool with just the regular one? I think it's cool. I'll give it a shot. You're picking one up. I'll try to solve it in less than a thousand years. Wow. All right. Well, you're going to have to update us on that. Um, quick update on Cyberpunk. Yeah. It's $5. If you decide to get it on console. Bargain bin pricing. CJ CD Project Red's open world RPG gets its biggest discount yet. Five dollars? Mm -hmm. And the only reason why I put it up here is because I think Cyberpunk has solved most of its problems in terms of bugs. And Are you saying this is a good deal? This is a hell stuff. of a deal right here? Yeah. I it, beat it. It's a good game. It's time it's to play Cyberpunk. Now that it's five well, five bucks makes it Man, it was just so... The expectations were so huge. Yeah. It was just so much pressure. <laughs> it was just... With the Keanu? So much pressure. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I'm kind of glad it's over, the pressure. Um, I remember when it was taken off of the console stores completely. Um, mm -hmm. The sci-fi epic from the makers of The Witcher 3 is going for 5 bucks on PS4 and Xbox One over, the, over at the electronics retailer with free upgrades to the new gen PS5 and Xbox Series XS versions. The sale ends at 1 a.m. April 8th. Okay, so you got to do this pretty soon if you want it. Mm -hmm. At which point the price will re revert back to the normal 30 bucks, which is obviously a lot less than it originally was as well. Cyberpunk 27, 2077 was nowhere near as bad at launch but still had its fair share of major issues, especially on console. The 2020 role-playing shooter has tons of bugs and graphics issues on PS4 and Xbox One, and in some cases looked downright ugly. Yeah, it was, it was busted. I guess they fixed a bunch of things, and they gave you the deal. It's part of Best Buy's current spring video game sale. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and yeah, you, get to up, you can upgrade to the PS5 version or whatever. Now's the time to play if you have any extra time after playing Elden Ring. Yeah, have at it. Oh, this is cool. Uh, one of the greatest and hardest dance scenes ever recorded. The Nicholas Brothers Jumping Jive from 1943. Now, something I wanted to mention. Actually, can you just take that title and throw it into uh, YouTube? The Nicol From where it starts, the Nicholas Brothers? Yeah, right there. Uh, because this this um, uh, movie clip, whatever it is, from, uh, what did I say, 1943? Yes, it has been colorized with de-oldify. And so I got to shout out this YouTube channel, Black, Black Pepper Swing. Because ob obviously this was a black and white clip uh, mm. originally. Mm -hmm. And they've made it, I mean, they brought uh, s such life to it mm -hmm. with this, uh, this de-oldify. Uh, uh, post-processing applied to balance colors and to remove some artifacts. It's it's very difficult doing this stuff and making it look believable or accurate at all. Yeah, with the skin tones and stuff. It's it's very, very difficult. But anyway, that's not the entire point. The point is to actually watch the video and you can go go to the Black Pepper Swing version of it because the Reddit post is kind of doesn't play very well. No, just, just, just play the video on YouTube. It's the same video. This one? Yeah, and kill the audio. Oh, you don't have any audio. Okay. Ah, maybe give me a touch of the audio. I'm going to take a big risk right now. Give me a little touch of the audio. I don't know if we're going to get <laughs> pegged for this, but it's kind of actually Is important. It's kind of actually important because what's going on here, and I'm going to talk a little bit through it, is that the dancers are actually contributing... A contributing instrument because of the sound of their feet and the fact that their dance sequence is uh, correlated to the uh, instrumentation so it, it, like th this is a, a beautiful thing to watch as 
these humans in real time have to make adjustments to manage the choreography. Like, hmm. it's not like you have a, a track playing in the background, right? It's not like a recording. So they didn't rehearse this then. Oh, I'm right. sure they. I'm sure they rehearsed it about a thousand oh. times. But you can. I want you to scroll forward now to when the actual dance sequence happens. Oh, so they're playing to the beat. But there's a swing to it. Like it's not like how. how it's not like. Um, you can tell it's not computerized. Wow, they're dancing on top of tables, jumping from table to table. Right beside, uh, what was that the tuba? <laughs> well, look, the, the guy almost players? got kicked in the front, right? You can yeah. see his his expression. He's like, man, I almost got kicked in the head. Like, just don't move. But these guys are in such tune with one another. You can see the deoldify uh, filter having some issues or, sure. and halos around. Anyway, go forward a little bit. There's one uh, element I want to show you here where they go up. Well, they did the splits. Oh, no, 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 but it's... You see the way they come up from the... Yeah. The splits, but watch them come down the stairs here. This is... I, I feel tremendous pain here. Bang! Oh. Bang! <laughs> Bam! And you hear the way that the band is having to adjust its timing? Mm. To match. Very cool. Like, you can imagine seeing this show. It got me thinking, because you watch a lot of these uh, shows, right? Like uh, modern concerts and things like that. And they like lean a lot on special effects and LEDs and fireworks. And you just have so many ways to make a spectacle. Mm -hmm. But when you didn't have access to all those extra tools to, to make something impressive, you had to have in, like performances like that. Yeah. Where they're just nailing it. They're just, um, you have to make a spectacle out of, with a little bit less help from special effects and so forth. And so... You do a bunch of splits. I I mean, yeah. You, there's no cords attached to them. Can you imagine? And they're wearing suits. Can you imagine the long term effects of how many? Because you're only seeing it five six times in a row down those stairs. But imagine all the rehearsals. Yes. The stretching and, I mean, their expression. Like they're 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 it's they're so comfortable doing this. They're so in sync and in tune. This reminds me of um, was it Cirque du Soleil? <laughs> yeah well in the, yeah and in, in those where cases, there is those, no effects to it those are people are straight up acrobats like mm -hmm. they're like gymnast style acrobats but you can just imagine going to this event you're sitting at one of these tables and he's just these guys are just knocking it out of the park man anyway cool cool historic clip Good stuff. and it's been enhanced and uh it's very impressive mm -hmm. all right last one Last one. Now, this is your story. And here we have hares fighting in the middle of the street. And uh, it looks like uh, they're going toe to toe. I don't know why they're pissed at each other. It's probably mating or something mm -hmm. related. Right on like an urban street. Right in front of this car. They don't want to get out the way. They're more interested in their own problems. Like, bang, wow. They're really going for it. Boxing over here. Yeah. Damn. They look kind of like, um, you know, how kangaroos fight? Very much so. Yeah, they look like mini kangaroos. I wonder how much damage they do because they would, do they have, they would have little claws, right? They would. So if they get each other in the eye there, that's going to be pretty uh, ugly. It's like one of those um, box, those punching speed bags. They're just going. <laughs> they're, fast. they're fast. You're right, yeah. man. That's a lot of uh, strikes. It's a lot of strikes. And, um, yeah, they're fighting along the street, and when one of them hits the uh, the edge there, oh, you, you can, can kind hear <laughs> you can hear the patter. The you can hear. Yeah, the, listen to that. Parra, parra. Wow. Yeah, they're really. Uh, it's a UFC fight there. Man, what what do they what do they want to do? Like, when does one back down? Like, when does the injury occur? 
Because I feel like they would just do could do this till they're exhausted. Yeah, the joke is uh, minus one HP, minus <laughs> one HP. It's uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's uh, nature, man. Uh, at nature is wild in an urban environment. They still got their beef, whatever they're arguing about. Somebody's uh, in somebody else's territory, or the some somebody's mating with the wrong yeah. mate or you, uh, someone needs to make commentary on this <laughs> yeah. you want uh, Rogan to do some UFC commentary yeah. oh my god someone can just remix it <laughs> yeah and he's down he landed with the right hand the only thing is you have to be oh I think those hairs might have got Otis's attention he walked all the way over here he's like what's the deal uh Thank you very much to everybody who joined us here today. As usual, we truly do appreciate your time and uh, you make it all worthwhile. This show right here is a lovely thing to do. We cover it all. The entire internet. If it happened on the internet, it happens on this show. And it happened here today. Time well spent. I promise you that. We're going to be back tomorrow. What is tomorrow? Friday? Mm -hmm. Mo will be back tomorrow. Mo will be back tomorrow. Exciting times. Uh, I know everybody has missed Mo greatly, so he'll be back tomorrow, and we'll be very interested to catch up with him and find out what the hell has been going on over the last couple of days. Uh-huh. Uh, thank you very much. I already said thank you very much. We'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. See you.